Hi, I'm Wayne Blanchard. I'm a certified financial planner and a member of the Garrett Planning Network. We're going to talk about collateral loan tips. Now, we're going to talk about collateral in just a minute and we'll talk about some tips in terms of this as we go along, but it's really important. Anytime you think about a loan, I think that the best way to understand a loan is to understand it from the lender's standpoint. I worked for a bank for a long time and was a, was a loan officer. So the way I learned how to, how to loan money is there are only three questions. And if you can answer these three questions, you will know whether or not you can qualify for a loan as a, as a general rule. Number one is what is your ability to pay? Number two, is what is your willingness to pay? And number three is what happens if you don't pay? Now your ability to pay is how much income do you make? You know, what's your job? What's your likelihood you're gonna keep that job? Your willingness to pay basically has to do with your credit. How have you paid other people in the past? And the third thing is what happens if you don't pay? Now that's when we come into a collateralized loans. Now there are only two kinds of loans. There are loans that have collateral, that means something that the lender can take away if you don't pay, and unsecured loans, which are basically signature loans, where there is nothing that they can really take away if you don't pay. If all they have is your signature on a note, they can sue you, they can get a judgment against you, but there's nothing they can really take away at that stage. If you get a car loan or a house loan, that car or that house or that boat or that motorcycle, whatever it is, is collateral for that loan. So that is a collateralized loan. And if you don't pay, they can come and get that collateral. So that's what you have to think about. Now, tips on collateralized loans. Basically, it's very simple. The more the collateral is worth and the more easily it can be disposed of, probably the more money you can borrow against it. In other words, if you had money in a savings account, that would be collateral. And how much do you think, how much do they stand to loan, to lose? If you make a thousand dollars, $1,000 loan against a savings account that has $5,000 in it, do you think they're gonna lose any money? Of course not. Do you think they're gonna be real easy on your ability to pay and your willingness to pay? Of course they will, because they know that all they have to do is take the money out of your savings account. Now, let's say you're going to go buy a new skateboard. And the new skateboard, uh, you're going to spend $1,000 on a skateboard that uh, is a really highly specialized one made out of all this special stuff. And it's a, maybe even a one-of-a-kind thing. Uh, they wouldn't know where to sell it. They wouldn't know what to do with it. Do you think they're going to really want that skateboard as collateral? Probably not. Now, maybe they, what they'd say is, we'll loan you the money to buy the skateboard, but you got to put up something else's collateral that has more value to it, more readily marketable. So, a tip for a collateralized loan is you don't have, the collateral does not have to be what you're borrowing. It can be something else. You, could, you can use a savings account. You can use a, uh, the cash value of a life insurance policy. You could use a car and buy your skateboard. You can use all kinds of different things. The better the collateral, the longer the term you'll be offered, and uh, the lower the interest rate. So that's the key thing. Think about what's going to be my situation in terms of, you know, what am I trying to buy? Another tip would be try to use a specialized lender. For example, car loans. If you're going to buy a new car, generally speaking, you're going to get a cheaper loan from a company that specializes in new car loans because they probably have some kind of a relationship with the car manufacturer. So those rates will be cheaper than if you go to somebody else. Not always so. Always got to shop around. Shop around for the, who has the best rates on, in particular. But specialized lenders, bigger boats, another, another perfect example. If you try to go to a normal bank to buy, let's say you're going to spend $50,000 on a boat. As a general rule, they are not set up to use that type of collateral. They don't know how to dispose of it. The last thing they want to do is in the bank parking lot, 
have a 35 foot sailboat sitting in their sitting in their yard out there. So what they're going to want to do is you're going to need to find a sailboat lender to lend you the money, somebody that knows sailboats, how to dis dispose of them if something goes wrong. All this comes back down to what happens if you don't pay. So if you have some collateral, want to borrow some money, the, uh, the, the value of that collateral, the steadiness of that collateral, and how liquid it is, is going to have a big effect on it. So those are a couple of tips on collateralized loans.